Overnight in Valdosta, a man was found dead after being shot. Thanks for joining ABC 27 for your 630 News. I'm Ariel Schiller. It all started after 3 this morning when Valdosta police received calls in reference to a shooting. They responded to the 500 block of St. Augustine Road South. That's about a half mile from Blanton Commons Apartments. Now at 11, an update in the trial of former FSU football star Travis Rudolph. He has been found not guilty on all charges. He was charged with one count of first-degree murder and three counts of attempted first-degree murder. The Leon County Sheriff's Office is responding to the cancellation of the Guns and Gardens event that was supposed to happen tomorrow. Guns to Gardens is where people can surrender their guns and have them turned into garden tools on site. Former Vice President Mike Pence releasing a video declaring his bid for the White House today and kicking off his campaign in Iowa. President Biden signing legislation to keep the U.S. government from defaulting on its debt. It's just two days before the June 5th deadline. If it wasn't met, the U.S. government would have defaulted for the first time in its history. The director of Making Miracles Group Home is sharing her reaction after a local 10-year-old decided to spend her allowance money to buy shoes to help the less fortunate. I caught up with Monica Holden and found out more about why she decided to give back. Yeah, Gabriella, there are a lot of people here already. There's people from multiple news outlets, people who are fans of the vice president. And one thing you really need to know about today is that there are going to be road closures downtown. According to Colorado State University, having your child just read four to five books a summer can help keep them from experiencing that summer slide. Well, Ava, there's a lot of vendor tents already set up, as you can see behind me. And you can see these little red bags around the parking meters. Those are no parking signs. So if you have plans to come down here tonight, where you normally park might not be where you can actually park. A cool way to get out into the community and help people. Several businesses have donated to support his cause. Chrisman even has a DoorDash five star rating. <laughs> Elizabeth, like I said, I mean, that's such a cool way to, you know, give back to the community, but also stay in shape. Check out this bear in Colorado that found itself in a bit of a situation. This happened Wednesday in Steamboat Springs. The bear was caught on video hanging by its claws from a second story window. It was finally able to leave by going back into the house and then through another window on the ground level. And, uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> If he caught that beginning of the video, I think he literally got the poop scared out of it. <laughs> at least, Ariel, at least he decided to do that outside and not right. inside the house. It could have been Man. worse. It could have been indoors. The secret to Bobby's longevity is the calm, peaceful environment that southern Portugal offers. Bobby is a purebred Rafero do Alentejo, which is a breed of Portuguese dog trained to guard livestock. Wow. Uh, I thought my dog was old. My oldest dog just turned 17. So, I mean, 31, I, I got to know what they're feeding that dog because seriously, how do you get a dog to live to 31? She was just a very sweet, loving lady. She would do anything for anybody. She loved children. I mean, um, she loved her grandbabies. <laughs> She loved me too, and she loved all my brothers. This day has been a long time coming for Laura Van and her family. It's the day she'll finally get justice for her mother, Faye Van, the day that her mother's killer, Donald Dilbeck, will be executed. We met with Van and two of her friends at the Leon County rest stop on I-10 as they made the four-hour ride to Rayford from Dothan, Alabama. Van says she and her brother had a tough time deciding whether to attend the execution or not. Ultimately, she decided to attend while her brother decided not to. She can be free now. That's just how I feel about it. Like, I feel like she's just been hovering, waiting, you know, for this to happen. Like I said, I don't feel that it's fair that he got to live 33 more years than she did. So, because when she died, it's like my whole family died. Donald Delbeck was already serving a life sentence for the death of Lee County Deputy Dwight Lynn Hall back in 1979. He escaped custody two days before murdering Faye Van in 1990 after he attempted to carjack her. She was waiting alone in the Tallahassee Mall parking lot. Laura says she was supposed to be with her mom that day, which is something that she struggled with over the years. I've always wondered if I went, if I did go, would it would have, have happened to me too, or would it, he have not even bothered her? Van was only 11 years old when her mother was killed. Even with the anger and sadness that comes with the tragedy she's lived through, she's managed to stay strong. Because I had to take her place, more, more or less. You know, I was young, you know, so I had to grow up faster. And I went through a lot of you know, struggles um, that I've dealt with, some I haven't dealt with, but you know, I'm still right back. And the biggest strength of all was being able to forgive Delbeck for what he did. I 
had a hard time because I had to forgive him for myself to move on with my own life. In a lot of districts, is one parent complains, and because of all the rhetoric, the air on the side of caution, and you know, you're threatened with a third degree felony, or you could lose your teaching license. The most recent district to have a book ban or book removal come to light is Wakulla County. Though the removal of the graphic novel, The Little Rock Nine from Wakulla Elementary Schools was resolved in October of last year. The Florida Freedom to Read Project made a records request and posted about the removal of the book on their Twitter several days ago. Reagan Miller, director of development for the group, says they do believe in parental rights, but not when it impedes on the decisions of other parents. I understand the language is harsh, but it is history, and it was, it's not, it was not part of the curriculum. It was simply a book in the library, and if you, you know, exercise your parental rights that way and ask that your child, you know, just opt out of the library, instead of removing access for all children. Jessica Compton is the parent who filed the complaint to Riversink Elementary School. I asked for an interview, but she did not want to go on camera. She did send me a statement saying that she said she read Little Rock Nine by Marshall Poe after her nine-year-old stated her library book had profanity in it. She felt the book was inappropriate for her age. The inappropriate comment included racial slurs in the book. The book chronicles nine African Americans, the first group of students to desegregate Little Rock Central High School in the 50s. Assistant Superintendent Sonny Chancey sent me this statement saying in part, the outcome of the review for the book in question was the recommendation to move the book from elementary school to a grade level deemed more appropriate. This does not constitute a ban as WCSB students will still have the opportunity to read the book during their K-12 through experience. Miller says for parents that are frustrated with book bans and removals, the best thing they can do is speak up. The majority of people want their children to have access to information and no one is advocating for pornography. We just want our kids to have access to information and be able to read freely in a library. The sound of those shoes coming out of a plastic shopping bag sounds like any other shopping trip. Ten-year-old Monica Holden was with her grandmother, Mary Holder, when she saw those shoes on clearance. She decided she wanted to use her own allowance money to buy those shoes, but not for herself. We were shopping for laundry soap, and she's like, oh my God, they're only a dollar. And I said, well, none of them's going to fit you. And she's like, but they'll fit a lot of people. I was like, oh, get as many as you want. Holder posted a picture of her granddaughter with the nearly 15 pairs of shoes she bought in the Living Tallahassee Facebook group, asking for recommendations on where to donate them. She decided on making Miracles Group Home, which helps homeless women get back on their feet. Deborah Harris, director for Making Miracles, describes what she felt when Monica and her grandmother showed up with all those shoes. This little girl comes up and just say, hey, this is what I have. I'm going to take my money and buy shoes. You know, um, it was amazing. Harris shares what it meant to see a young girl do such a selfless act. To think about it, it's just an awe, like all in all, because it's like this is a little child, you know, where she probably could be at home jumping rope, playing with dolls, and um, but she actually wanted to do something for another person and really don't know them. When I asked Monica about spending the money on the shoes for other people, as opposed to spending it on things for herself, like ice cream, she says donating the shoes will stick with her for much longer. Those things are like memories and they last longer than something like ice cream or earrings or a toy because you can easily just lose that toy and those earrings and you could just eat that ice cream and it just goes away. Monica shares her advice for other kids her age. Always choose kindness and if you don't always have to you don't always have to receive what you give. You don't always have to receive if you give. A lesson she learned from her grandmother. I'm floored that she would even say that. I, I try to help as much as possible. I always tell all the kids to choose kindness. Always.